On this episode, we keep things light with some funny, strange, or weird stories from our various adventures in Bangkok. So, if you've ever had one of those evenings that ends up being strange or memorable, you'll love this episode of the Bangkok Podcast. Sawadee krap and welcome to the Bangkok Podcast. My name is Greg Jorgensen, a Canadian who borrowed $10 off a friend in 2001 and have been hiding in Thailand ever since to avoid paying it back. And I am Ed Knuth, an American who came to Thailand on a one-year teaching contract 19 years ago, fell in love with the golden shower, <laughs> Thailand's national tree, and never left. That makes a lot more sense if you've heard our bonus episode. <laughs> we want to say a quick thank you to one of our patrons, Eric Lamar, who supports us at the show shoutout level. Stick around after we're done telling a few weird stories from Bangkok to hear why Eric might need to start purchasing some .com URLs to avoid smearing his good name. Mm-hmm. A huge thanks to all of our patrons who support the show. Patrons get a whole bunch of cool stuff, including our regular show a day early behind-the-scenes photos and videos of our interviews, discounts on swag, which you can find on our website, and various other things that aren't available to regular listeners. But best of all, patrons like Eric also get an unscripted, uncensored bonus episode every week where we riff on current events and other topics. We just finished recording this week's bonus show, and we only chatted about one thing, really, which was the cave. Uh, We talked about how the story peaked about a year and a half ago, then basically disappeared. Uh, A few behind-the-scenes tidbits from our interview with the director and star of the movie, as well as a discussion about what would happen if the same thing had taken place in a Western country like the U.S. or Canada. To become a patron, head to bangkokpodcast.com forward slash support. Yeah, yeah, and before we get into the show, we should mention we have settled on a date for our year-end meetup. And it is going to be held on December 7th. That's a Saturday from 7 to 9 p.m. at Smalls, where we always have it. And uh, we're going to be putting something up on our Facebook page this week. So check that out. And if you're in town on December 7th, come down to Smalls, have a few drinks, meet us, meet uh, meet, meet the crew. And uh, I'll, I'll, let, I'll let this slip, but this might this might not happen. Until, and Ed, I don't know if I've told you this even, but Tony Joe, season one co-host and co-founder of the Bangkok podcast, might might be in town but we're not sure yet but oh wow that is great news i've actually met him i didn't know him obviously like you did uh but i met him back in the day when he was your co-host you were you were at the launch party of the bangkok podcast back in 2010 that is correct uh although i barely remember that evening for some reason i'm not sure why i looked at photos Um, recently and it's we we look all we all look (laughs) terribly frighteningly young yes (laughs) Yeah, like way skinnier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but to- Tony might be there. Uh, but if not, at least Ed and I will be there as well as probably a bunch of other cool listeners. So if you're here on December 7th, come down and say hi and uh, check our Facebook page for the invite, which will go up in a few days. So there you go. For sure, for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, we've had some pretty heavy shows in the past month or so. Uh, we've done a two-parter with a Thai politician. We did a discussion on expat behavior and a three-person interview with the team who helped make the cave. So we decided this week we'd blow off a little bit of steam and each discuss some of the stranger, funnier, weirder things that we've experienced in our time in Bangkok. As you know, we love living in Bangkok, and we especially like how even the most normal evening can spiral into a crazy adventure with weird stories. So we decided to each pick a couple of funny or surprising stories from our years in the city and discuss them here and have a bit of fun. So uh, what do you think about this? Yeah, you know, the way I think about this is, um, you know, I think it's kind of a meme. I, I feel like we didn't say this when I was younger, but I feel like this is kind of a thing where after something happens you say like did that just happen <laughs> right right I, it's funny because i don't remember doing that when i was young but this is like a thing now where you're like you know you just kind of can't believe something happened and so you and so so that's the way I, uh, how i see the show there's just some things that have happened to me in thailand where immediately after it's happened i'm just can't really believe it happened i'm just like wait did that just happen? <laughs> right. I've never actually thought something like that, but there have been many times where I've sort of got home and gone like, wow, that 
was unexpected that evening. I, I did not. I did not expect <laughs> that, for that to weird. happen. <laughs> you know? That got weird. Yeah, yeah, and not necessarily <laughs> dirty or gross or, or dangerous or anything, but just like you know, none of that was planned. And I, you know, I was I was planning to go and have a quiet hamburger with a friend and we ended up going out on like an eight hour adventure with a whole bunch of people you know these kind of things happen in bangkok for some reason they don't yeah, they, they don't do. happen to me nearly as much as they used to now that i'm old and with child but uh <laughs> yeah they certainly do so uh so each of us decided uh, thought of a couple of things that were uh that were sort of memorable from our past and thought we'd tell a couple of funny stories so uh do you want to go first ed or do you want me to go first uh, I can go first. I can, I can, I can bust out one of my stories. I've got two stories in particular. Uh, I definitely have a bunch of these types of stories. Some of them not appropriate for the podcast, but I, <laughs> I got a couple that I've, I got a couple that I think will fly. Okay, so my first one is just this a totally odd, you know, like the way you introduced it, this thing of something just totally unexpected that you just you just don't think this is what any something that's going to happen. Right, just kind of so, derails your evening. Yeah. So in this story, I was uh, going out to lunch and I was going to a Lebanese place uh, that I love that we've talked about on the podcast before, this place called Beirut, which I had eaten at many, many times. Um, And uh, so nothing surprising. Um, uh, But for some reason, I ate there and uh, I had used a lot of this spicy sauce uh, that I had had before. But I think in this one case, like I've eaten at this restaurant hundreds of times but in this one case i think something was wrong with that or i ate something bad oh yeah because i left i left and i got in a taxi um and i was going down uh with you wireless road and all of a sudden i i just had to go to the bathroom it's just like it hit you yeah it was one of those like emergency like i need a toilet like immediately you know like right. with with no warning like with no like upset stomach or maybe maybe i had like a minute of oh something's wrong with my stomach you know you've got like a minute of like something's wrong here and then all of a sudden you you need a you need a toilet like and it feels it feels like someone has started like a watch all i can hear is like tick, 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 tick. that's exactly it's like, right like it's, it's like you've it's, got 15 seconds <laughs> it's coming out you know it's, it's coming out and it, it you know it, it's it you know, it's totally a horrible thing when you have to th- puke. Like that's a horrible thing. But at least you can roll down the window, and it's gross and horrible. But wait, wait. But it's so like, let, let me let me be let me be clear here. You, did you have to did you have to puke or go number two? Number two, brother. This okay, is, all right. I just so, to... I mean, the puking is, would be thoroughly unpleasant. But you got some options there, you know? right? Like when, when it's like when you need a toilet, like you know to get to, you know it's like you just don't have many options so we're on we're on going down wireless and <laughs> uh we're passing all the stuff and i'm like i, I gotta get out and we're we happen to be going past the Limpini police station right yeah. okay and it, you know it, it's not like the police station is a normal place you would think like hey i'm gonna run in there and use the toilet it's not like that's a normal <laughs> thing but it's like i know that they have toilets and obviously it's open to the public so you know it's just i just like throw money at the cab driver and like jump out of the taxi and i just run into the police station you know <laughs> um and you know i've got seconds i i I've, you know the clock as you pointed out like the clock is ticking so i see the sign pointing upstairs i see the guy's thing i run upstairs and there's like the the guy's bathroom i run in and there's three stalls there all three doors are closed i quickly look underneath the the the, the stall and there's someone in the third stall so i've got like two stalls i'm like awesome i open up the first stall and I, I'm not making this up. The entire toilet has been removed in there, and there's like yellow. There's like yellow caution things, like don't fall in this hole. <laughs> right. Okay, so it's like un, it's unusable, right? And I, I'm like, well, I still got the second stall. I go to the second stall. There's no one in there. The door will not open. It's just like Jeez. I'm pulling and pulling, and it won't open, and I can't get the damn thing open. And then there's someone in the third stall. So I'm I'm about to explode, like right now. <laughs> like I'm looking over at the urinal, and I'm like. Is that possible? Like, will, <laughs> I, think we, I think we've all been there at some point. Like, is this physi- journal, like, like oh. physiologically? Like, will this be okay? And then I'm like, I, just like in a last second thing, I I dash out, and there's like the, the 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 woman's bathroom, and I just remember going in there and looking to my left, and there's some poor like policewoman, and she's at the mirror, right? 
and 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 she just turned and saw me and i just like threw up my hands and like dashed into the toilet <laughs> can you this poor woman just like do 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 the lipstick and boom the door opens and this crazed sweaty farang runs into the stall that's pretty much exactly it <laughs> but i made it i made it man oh man that's funny but but it but it's just one of those things where like five minutes after it's over you're just like did that just happen like it just comes out of nowhere it's like <laughs> you have no idea that this is what is going to happen <laughs> you know and then it's just like this travail it's like an ordeal that you're not expecting and like not <laughs> this poor not... police woman is still telling the story to this day like this one time i was just in the bathroom <laughs> hey well she thought can... a monster was gonna attack me or something she can come on the podcast she can tell her version of the events <laughs> <laughs> that's funny so that's my first uh weird unexpected uh afternoon in bangkok okay well i've got one that was like a, a crash course in a uh an introduction to what you shouldn't do in thailand one of the things you shouldn't do in thailand and um this was when i was still kind of new here i'd only been here a couple of years and i i was i was this is what i was doing i was i was leading a bunch of friends around pat pong they wanted to see a ping pong show which if you haven't seen one i recommend you don't it's the worst thing i've ever seen and i will if I never see one again, it will be too soon. Um, but my, you know, your friends are in town and you're like, Oh, take us to a pig show. And I was like, well, all right, this is my city and I'm expected to show them the sites. So this is part of the sites. And, uh, there's guys and girls. There's a group of about six of us. And we went into this terrible, terrible place in Pat Pong on the second level. And we're watching this awful ping pong show and I'm kind of sitting there and there's girls walking around and random people walking around and a girl walked in front of me and stood there. And I was waiting for a few minutes for her to move. And she didn't seem like she was moving. And so I was, I, I was holding a drink and I was sitting back in the chair and I, and I thought like, I should just maybe politely tell her to move. So I, with my foot, I reached out and I tapped Ooh. the side of her leg. Ooh. And I knew that you shouldn't do things with your feet in Thailand, but I figured, I mean, <laughs> we're seeing the most horrible things you can imagine. So I figured like decorum is probably not something that is going to be high on the list of most people. But I tapped this woman on the leg with my foot <laughs> and she turned around and lost her mind on me. Oh, really? And started screaming at me in Thai. And I didn't know hardly any Thai at the time. All my friends stopped and they're looking at me. And this woman was just like right in my face, right up into me. And like, I've never seen a Thai person explode so much. And she was pointing at my foot and pointing at the leg and pointing at the, you know, the scary looking dudes who were hanging out by the doors, the bouncers. And I was just sort of like oh, sitting there with my eyes up open, like just taking it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know? Wow. You know, that's just one of those things that is just, it's so unpredictable. I mean, it, the bottom line is that that's the kind of thing where you, you should have known you shouldn't do it, but you, uh, your, your reasoning was like, well, whatever. Like I'm in a pretty casual place. <laughs> <laughs> casual is a bit of an understatement. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, um, you're, yeah, so, yeah, so I, I figured I figured of all the places to do it, I could probably get away with it here. And I never even thought of it, you know, like it's not something that foreign, foreigners find offensive at all. So I just did it sort of like, excuse me, can you move? And she, boom. So I, I really learned my lesson there. And then, of course, we, we we left soon after that. And my friends were like, what the hell was that all about? I thought she was going to jump on you and start punching you. So I had to explain <laughs> what I did and why it's inappropriate. But it was, yeah, it was a, it was a crash course in, in uh, you know, obeying the rules when you're in, when you're in Rome, do as the Romans. For sure, that's a good uh, that's a good Thai cultural lesson right there. Yeah, it scared me. <laughs> when when watching a ping pong show, don't touch anyone with your foot. Right. Yeah, that will fit on a t shirt. I'm sure. That's the lesson. <laughs> that's great. That's great. <laughs> well, I do have another one. All right. So this one definitely fits in the category of like I just can't believe that just happened. So let me set the scene for you. So um, I am uh, recently married. And uh, I have already put my application in for permanent residency, which we have talked about on the podcast before. Yeah. So, you know, it's, as you know, it's not the same thing as citizenship. It's just like a permanent visa, but it does let me live here forever. But I was just, uh, I had just applied for it. And, um, you know, the application process is very difficult. There's a million things you got to do. But uh, one of the other, like, uh, factors is... Uh, whether you're married or not, because that changes the fee you have to pay if you get accepted. So I know that you know this already, and we have talked about it on the podcast before, but uh, roughly, 
if you're not married to a Thai person and you get permanent residency, you have to pay a 196,000 baht, uh, which is about, uh, what, $6,000 U.S. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. But if you are married to a Thai person, it's only 96,000 baht. Right. Which is more like which is more like three thousand dollars. It's a um, huge savings. Yeah. Um and uh so they had told me so I you know, it's a very long application process and I had done all of that, but they actually said, I remember them saying in the office, um, uh we're gonna we have to verify that you're married, uh so you might get a visit at your home. Okay. And you know, I like just that alone I thought was kind of weird, but I didn't really think much of it. I assumed that like someone was just going to come and make sure me and my wife were living together because we had I'd put the same address you know on the thing, right. uh, so I didn't think much of it. And uh, so fast forward a couple months, and it was just a random Saturday morning. There was no warning. We didn't get like a call or an email ahead of time. It was nine a.m. on a Saturday morning, and there was just a knock on the door, which is pretty unusual in Bangkok to have people knocking right. on your door, um, and. Um, uh, I can't remember if I went to the door first or my wife went to the door first, but there's just two Thai guys at the door and they're not dressed like in uniforms, but they were dressed kind of in office attire. Um, and uh, it turns out they were from the government. And so they explained to my wife, like, we're here to verify your marital status or the marital, <laughs> marital status of your husband. Jeez. And so like my wife comes in, you know, she's like explaining what's up. And I'm like, all right, this is kind of weird. But okay, whatever. So two two Thai guys come in, like we sit down in the kitchen and we start talking. Obviously, I can't speak Thai well, and they don't speak English, so they're going through my wife and they're just asking us questions, like, "Do you both live here full time?" Like this kind of stuff. Like, and, right. and we're just answering all the questions, and, and they've got like a a questionnaire, and they're just checking boxes and doing whatever. Um, and then, uh, you know, this is through my wife. They say like. Um, uh, well, we want to verify that she really lives here, so we want to see like her clothes. Okay, <laughs> you know, like you know, it's like they. It was, so that was the thing. They're like, well, if she lives here, she must keep her clothes here. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, my wife is saying, well, like, we got to go upstairs to like the bedroom. I'm like, all right, this is kind of weird, but I guess we got to do what we got to do. I, I would like to say it's a bit th- weird, but they're not wrong. Yeah, I would like to save the three thousand dollars, right? You know, so I'm like, I'm, you know, yeah. I'm like, all right. So we trudge up the stairs, me and my wife and two Thai government workers. Like, we walk into our bedroom, and my wife like opens up the closet, um, <laughs> and the guys start talking to each other, and they take out a camera, uh, okay. and they start taking pictures of her clothes. And then I remember specifically the guy taking pictures of all her shoes, which she has a lot of. I'm you sure know, I've seen movies that start like this. You know, they're taking pictures of all their <laughs> shoes. And, you know, I think that's funny because it's like, you know, just logically, you know, if there was one pair of shoes there, they could have been like, hey, maybe she brought those shoes like last night. You know, <laughs> the but guy didn't a, start trying on shoes, did he? <laughs> no, he didn't start trying on shoes. Um, so <laughs> I'm thinking this is kind of weird. Like the, the Thai government is taking pictures of our closets. Right. Okay? But it gets even weirder. Okay, the guy, the guys start talking to my wife and she's like, looks really surprised and she's talking to them and something's going on between them. Like they're arguing. And then my wife turns to me and she says, they want us to lie down in the bed. <laughs> and I'm like, are you what? serious? Well, oh I'm like, God. what do you mean? And they're like, well, they want to verify their husband and wife. And so like they want us to get a picture of us lying in bed next to each other. <laughs> Oh and I'm like, God. are you, I'm like, are you serious? And I'm like, I'm like with our, with our clothes on. Right. It's not like we have to like <laughs> prove our love to them. Right. 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 <laughs> and she's like, no, no, no. We can like have our clothes on. So we lie down in bed next to each other, like very stiffly. And the guy's got his camera out. And then he says something to my wife. And my wife says, he wants us to hold hands. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> this is getting weird. So we're lying in bed, fully clothed, lying next to each other, holding hands, and the guy's like snapping pictures. <laughs> and then, and then, and then they're like, "Okay." And then we get up and go downstairs, and the guy's like going through his forms, he's checking boxes, and he's like, "Huge exhale." Yeah, and he's like, "He's like, all right, we're good." And then he leaves, and I'm, oh I'm just God. sitting there, you know. I remember sitting there after that I left. I'm like, "Did that just happen?" <laughs> 
And it did. And, you know, I, it's funny because I would love to have a copy of the, that photo right now. Well, it's so funny that on some government computer fo- yeah. fo- file folder somewhere in like a Raiders of the Lost Ark warehouse, there's photos of your wife's shoes and you guys <laughs> laying in bed together. Well, you know, this is one of those things where those guys could have been totally punking us. Like, I have no idea. Like, those guys might have walked out of there and just burst out laughing going, I can't believe those idiots like did this <laughs> yeah. stuff. Like, this is this is hilarious. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, I don't <laughs> like, know. We, we, we could have been punked. I have no idea. Like, it's not like we got some warning that they were going to do this. But it's that... Like, now kiss. Re- now kiss. Yeah, really. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, dude, that really happened. That is... <laughs> that is crazy. Oh, my God. All right, what do you got, dude? All right, my my, my second story is, um, is a bit of a weird one. When I was... Back in the day when I was doing some acting, uh, sometimes, you know, sometimes commercials or whatever movies would need. I, I'm not an actor. I'm just a big, scary looking dude. So usually I was a bodyguard or a, a thug or something like that. So um, they got, I got called by this agency to come down for a commercial they were doing. And they said it was a wrestling commercial. And I said, okay. And I figured like, I'm just going to be like a guy standing around in a wrestling suit or something like that. And they didn't give any indication what it was for or that I would have lines or anything. So I show up to the casting agency and they're like, okay. So they take my picture and fill in my details and they say, okay, the sit down and wait as you do in most casting situations. So I waited for about half an hour and they finally said, okay, you can go in. So I went into this room and there was two guys, like two like skinny guys with a little camera on a tripod, like just a little home camera, nothing's professional. And there was a big, Thai dude, like bigger than me, huge, fat, Yokozuna, sumo looking guy <laughs> with his shirt off. Oh, really? And I was like, hi, hey. And they're like, hey. And they said, okay, you're going to be a wrestler. And I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> and they said, okay, so can you take your shirt off? <laughs> I was like, okay. So I took my shirt off and they said, okay, now we want you to wrestle this guy. I'm like, you mean the big, fat, shirtless guy over there? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Wait, so you were... Okay, so this was the audition. Like, you weren't actually shooting something. No, no. This was the audition for the commercial. And I had no okay. idea any of this was going to happen. So I'm, in, like, in my jeans and my socks with my shirt off. Oh, really? I think I, I think I just come from, like, teaching a, an English class or something like that. <laughs> and they're like, okay, now wrestle. And I'm standing there looking at this guy. And he's looking at me. And I'm like, okay. So we kind of slowly walk up to each other and... <laughs> I just I just copied what I remembered from WWF, you know. I put my hands on his shoulders and grabbed the back of his head, and I was like, ah, and started rolling around. <laughs> and it got, like, and they're like, okay, now now fall to the ground. Ah, and we fell to the ground. <laughs> like, okay, okay, now now roll roll over, like you on top of him and then him on top of you. Ah, and, you know, you know, our chests are touching and squeezing and sliding into each other. Oh, like, these two <laughs> random dudes are filming all this. Okay, now get up. And I just want to say this is even creepier than my experience. <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, at least I was I with my know. wife. At least I was with my wife. Yeah, so yeah, that's a good call. I didn't know this guy. Um, and the, the commercial was for uh, uh, some some noodles. And the this, the commercial would be like these two guys are wrestling. This is what I found out as I was doing this. And then mid wrestling match, we would both stop and go, "Hmm, moosap," you know, like the flavor of like minced pork <laughs> noodles. <laughs> So, so we had to, okay. And then and the guy was like, okay, now, now stop wrestling and smile and go moose up. And, and I, I didn't know the correct tones or something. And he was like, so I'm on my hands and knees, like hat with my shirt off with my arms around this other half naked guy. And the director quote unquote is giving me a tie lesson because I didn't know how to say the tones or anything like, <laughs> no, it's moo rising tone. I'm like, moo. And he's no, 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 moo, 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 no, moo. <laughs> So I'm like down on the floor hugging this guy saying this stupid line. And he's like, okay, now look in the camera and smile. Moo, moo. And it was just the weirdest thing. That is so funny. So just to be clear, so you did not know this ahead of time? No, I just knew that I was going to come down and try out for a for a, a wrestling commercial. That's all they said. <laughs> and um, and then the, the, the bonus was, so they, they you know, it, was, it, was, it, was, it turned out to be very professional, but it was weird because I didn't know where it was going to go, you know? Right, right. And, um, so, well, you know, I said, okay, thanks. And then I just put on my shirt and left. And then a couple of days later, I got a call and they're like, hi, it's so-and-so from this agency. Um, if you get hired for this wrestling commercial, are you willing to shave your chest? And I've, <laughs> I've got a pretty hairy chest. And I said, uh, well, how much does it pay? And they said, it pays 20,000 baht. And I was like, 
Oh, I'll shave my chest for 20,000 baht. Yeah. <laughs> I said, like, yeah, yeah, okay. You're I'll like, do it. every man has his price. That's right. That's right. That's right. And I, I, I was going to say, like, if you give me 50, I'll shave anything you want me to shave, you know? Like, <laughs> but, uh, but I, I, you know, in the end, I never got a call back and I never had to shave my chest. So I didn't get the part, but I did get to wrestle around with a naked stranger, half naked stranger. So, uh, wow. So li- life is full of pleasant surprises, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, just like you said, I walked out. I'm like, did that really happen? Did I just spend <laughs> spend an hour wrestling with a half naked stranger? I guess I did on camera. You know, in a way, this is a good like actor's story because uh, I think people who do auditions, I think they would be able to relate. Like, I've never done anything like that, but I think actors, this is like the life. You show up and they're like, like, be a gunslinger, be a samurai, you know, be a yeah. whatever, and you're just like, all right, uh, all right, let me see what I can do here. <laughs> I've got a similar story with my kid. I won't get into it in detail, but basically we had to show up at this casting agency and they were casting for a diaper commercial. So we had to like, we show up and they're like, okay, take all of his clothes off. And like, all right. And we go into the casting room and there's 15 other kids in their underwear running around and screaming. And, you know, my kid had to get up on the sofa and they're like, what, mu- what mu- music does he like? And I said, oh, he likes Uptown Funk by whatever that guy is, Bruno Mars or whatever. And uh, so they put it on and I'm like, okay, jump, dance. This is so fun. Wiggle your butt, turn around, put your hands in the air. And they're, photographers are snapping pictures of my kid oh, jumping Jesus. around in his underwear oh geez. it's it's a surreal experience man wow well on that note on that note did that really happen yeah <laughs> bangkok's a fun city man you never know what's going to happen with the people you meet and the, and the and the shenanigans you get up to um like like i think like you and i like the, the reason we put this podcast out here is we want to let people know that it's it's very easy to have a normal life in bangkok have a normal relationship a normal job a normal life normal friends but it's also pretty easy for things to go into like adventure slash shenanigans slash crazy crazy time territory this is true. yeah there's something about being an expat that it just opens up weird doors that you can walk yeah. through and, and do stuff that you would never be able to do like i know a bunch of people here who've done like acting and modeling and they just would never be able to do that back home but here right. it's just you're something special so that just opens up different doors for you i'm a wrestler that's right <laughs> <laughs> all right let's get into some love loathe or live with where one of us picks a particular aspect of living in bangkok which we then discuss and decide if it's something we love about living here loathe about living here or have come to accept as something that we just have to learn to live with no matter how we feel about it and this week it is your turn man okay greg let's just maybe paint a picture for you so you're uh walking down the streets uh or maybe down an alleyway and there's a bunch of street food uh a lot of it smells really good you're feeling really good about it but then all of a sudden your eyes start burning (laughs) and you realize that what must be going on i guess i mean i guess what's going on is that actually there's like chili in the oil and it's actually somehow getting into the air right okay okay i I know you with me yeah it happens it happens (coughs) jeez i'm coughing just thinking about it (laughs) you know i i remember the first time it happened to me and uh, it's funny because i think the first time it happened to me someone had told me about it but it didn't make sense to me when someone like someone told me like hey yeah be careful when you're walking on there your eyes might burn and i was like what are you talking about and then it actually happened and you realized that there's like burning chili oil like in the air i mean it's right well i I i think i mean we can say like obviously my reaction is that i cough and it burns my eyes so no one would love that but i think a lot of people are kind of immune to it and it might sort of they might smell it and go like, oh, yeah, this is a really good restaurant. So that's the that's where the love would come in. Um, yeah. No, I mean, to be honest, uh, I didn't think there's much of a chance. I don't think you can really love this. <laughs> so, um, Well, but in a yeah, way, I don't... it is a very unusual Thai thing. Like, obviously, I've been around a lot of cooking in the States, and I've never experienced anything like this. Like, like no. if you... Uh, like if you've never been here or if you're an expat and this has never happened to you, it's a very strange thing. It's like yeah. literally your eyes or your throat, is, it's like burning. It's really disorienting because it feels like you're walking through a cloud of mustard gas or something. Just you're walking down the street like do, 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 and then <laughs> and, you, and you can't breathe and you're, it's like it's like you're drowning almost. Yeah, I mean, and it has to be, I mean, I, I, I'm just assuming it's like chili that's burning off. I mean, what else yeah. could it be, right? That's what it's got to be, right? It's, it's, a, it's like vaporized oil or something, or chili yeah. oil or something. Like that. So <laughs> I, I would say, I mean, I, it's easy to say I loathe it, but uh, I mean, I don't really like coughing and stuff when I'm walking down the sidewalk, but it, it's only temporary. 
and it is indicative of the awesome street food that's available in Thailand. So I would say I live with because it is just the price, a very small price you pay to be surrounded by such awesome food. So I'm going to say live with. True that. Uh, I mean, it, it does. It is one of those uh, for me. Like I, uh, since I work near Topper John, and there's just rows of street food. So it's like yeah. I, ex- I experience this. I wouldn't say like once a week, but it's a fairly regular experience for me. So I've just been through this dozens of times. And so, I, you know, it's one of those things that's obviously negative, but I, maybe it's part of the charm of like the yeah. weird backwards charm. But I got to be honest, I still I'm I, like every time it happens, I, I'm just like I, I just keep thinking like, aren't they aware of this or can't they cover it up? You know, you know what I mean? It's like no one like everyone seems to have your attitude that they just accept this. It's just like, oh, yeah, burning hot chili oil in the air that you have no choice but to walk through. That's yeah, that's just life. Yeah, (laughs) it's just something you have to live with. Yeah, I mean, no one one is like, hey, how can we stop this from happening? No one is saying that. (laughs) So I'm going to I'm going to have to go. I'm just going to have to go loathe just on pure common sense. Oh, yeah, it's bad. It's just a bad thing. Well, if I'm going to be coughing, I think that's the kind of coughing I'd like to do because at least when I'm done, I can get a good meal. That is true. That is true. (laughs) All right. So as we mentioned at the beginning of the show, we'd like to say thank you to Eric Lamar for lending us his support at the show shout-out level. And Greg, what did you find out about Eric? Well, I didn't find out a lot, actually, because I emailed Eric. At least I think I did. I'm pretty sure I did. I always email our patrons when they... When they uh, sign up and uh, I asked him for some info, but he never got back to me, or at least I never got a, I never saw a reply. That happens. So I, so I did what I, I, I normally do. And I turned to the internet and, um, I couldn't find much about Eric, but I went to the, uh, something struck me weird about his name. So I went to the internet anagram generator Whoa. and, um, I saw what his name could re- be rearranged to spell. And I got two things. The first one I got was. Mr. Rice Ale. Hmm, you know? Interesting. Yeah, like rice beer or something. Like that. I thought that right. was pretty cool. That's related to Thailand. And uh, the second one I got was Mr. Ear Lice, Ooh. which is not so <laughs> not so yeah. delicious. I kind of like rice ale better. Right, right, right. So there, I think there's like two ends of the spectrum here. There's rice ale, which is like, oh, oh that sounds pretty good. And then there's ear lice, which doesn't sound very good at all. <laughs> and then I went to ericlamar.com. No one has it. Whoa. Yeah, it's free. And it can be yours. Eric, if you're listening, I would suggest going buying it. It's like nine bucks on GoDaddy. And uh, I think you need to get it because now that I've put this out into the world, someone might buy ericlamar.com and they're either going to build a website called Mr. Rice Ale, which might be a nice website about a guy that likes to make like fermented alcohol or something like that. <laughs> or they're going to be a website called Mr. Ear Lice at ericlamar.com. And I don't think and you I, want that. I don't think you want that. No, no. I, I would say it's much more preferable to go for Mr. Rice Ale. So, uh, Eric, it's my suggestion that you go and buy ericlamar.com and then uh, just just squat on it for a while if you have to. And just FYI, I am available for small website projects, and I can build you a very nice Mr. Rice Ale website for your, uh, <laughs> for your online presence. But he's doing it for you, of course. It has nothing to do with his own interest. For science. That's right. For science. That's it's right. all for science. <laughs> yeah, so uh, ericlamar.com. Uh, thank you for your support, man. Uh, if you don't have a website, uh, you can get one. And uh, we'll, all right. we'll build you a nice Mr. Rice Ale site just for you. All right. Thank you, Eric. Uh, but also a final thanks to all of our patrons who help keep the show ad free. Patrons get a ton of cool perks and the warm, fuzzy feeling knowing that they're helping support the show. Find out more by clicking support on our website and connect with us online. We're Bangkok podcast on social media, bangkokpodcast.com on the web or simply Bangkok podcast at gmail.com. We love hearing from our listeners and always reply to our messages. Yeah, you can also listen to each episode on YouTube, chat with us online, or even reach out to me directly on Twitter, where I am BKK Greg. So thanks for listening, everyone, and we'll see you back here in one week. We will see you in one week. You're kind of like a mainstream popular movie guy. Very much. All those the movies I grew up watching, the big Hollywood spectacle movies. And, and right. I'm drawn to them. 
as someone so spectacular would be. It makes sense. Of course. In my world. Spectacular people like spectacular movies. <laughs> I need to get that made into a t-shirt with the Bangkok Podcast logo behind it.